So now we're on the last bit of the incisors. We're looking at the mandibular central incisor as well as the mandibular lateral incisor. And the characteristics of these two teeth are pretty similar. So I decided to group them together for simplicity. So let's start with the mandibular central incisor. So these guys are going to come out at six to seven years old while the lateral uh, max mandibular lateral incisors they're going to come out a little late, later at seven to eight now if you remember the maxillaries they were seven to eight and then eight to nine so as you see we're first going to have the centrals coming out first and then a year later typically the laterals will come out um, the big thing about the central incisors, if we look at this drawing right here in this one, we see that there's symmetry within the central incisors, and that's a big key feature. Um, there is symmetry going right down the middle right here, and same on the lingual aspect. So if we look at the, um, the central incisors, they have bilateral symmetry. I always like to remember their to 24 and 25 as twins because they basically look the same and they're going to have more of this kind of rigid box like look to it in terms of the distal mesial angles um, depending on your professor they're probably not going to ask you to distinguish between 24 and 25 so I wouldn't worry too much about that but there are some features that you should know regarding the mandibular central incisors. So the mandibular centrals, as I said, they're bilateral. These are going to be the smallest teeth uh, with respect to any other tooth in your mouth. Uh, so that's the big thing, it's the smallest tooth. Now in terms of the contacts, well, since they're symmetric, you'd expect that both the mesial as well as the incisal, uh, uh, sorry, distal, uh, um, are both going to be at the incisal third in terms of their contacts. And with all of the um, incisors, again, they do have three mammalons present and a cingulum, which all attribute to the developmental lobes, being that there's four developmental lobes. The cingulum is centered on the root axis. I kind of drew it poorly here, but it is uh, supposed to be centered. So we're going to write that. Um, now in terms of the height of contour, as we've seen so far in almost all of our uh, centrals is pretty much at the cervical third for the height of contour. Now here, if you remember, the there was a difference between the uh, mandibular and the maxillary. In terms of the coronal dimensions, we're going to have the incisal um, cervical greater than the mesial, I'm uh, sorry, facial lingual, which is greater than the mesial distal. So as you remember, this is the smallest of them all. So the incisal cervical is going to be fairly, is going to be the largest. Now if we look facial lingually, it's going to be bigger than the mesial distal, and I know that sounds weird, but if you think about it in your mouth, if you were to use your tongue and go over the dimensions, this is of course going to be the most confusing one, so it's going to be one of those you have to commit to memory. Um, so I would just commit that to memory more than anything else. Uh, the other thing is, as I said, since this is bilateral symmetry, you can expect 
that the the angles, the incisal angles, are going to be about 90 degrees. Um, and that is pretty much it on your mandibular centrals. They're, they're pretty boring teeth with respect to the other teeth. I mean, it's the easiest one to memorize. Now, the lateral incisors, we're going to keep with this same incisal cervical is greater than the facial lingual which is greater than the mesial distal that all remains the same the big thing is this distal lingual twist um, as you see when I drew this this is the incisal edge right here and this is the axis one way to distinguish when you're dis deciding the right or left, look for this distal lingual twist and it'll help you decide if you're on the right or left side. So this tooth right here, since the twist, this is the distal side, it's twisting in, we know this is going to be on the right side of the mouth. Um, so that's just an easy way to distinguish if you have the right tooth or the left tooth just look for that distal lingual twist. That's the big thing. That's going to be the selling point for that tooth. Um, now, the other thing is that the distal side is more rounded than the incisal, I mean, the mesial side. On the, if we're looking at the mesial versus the distal incisal angle. So keep that in mind that this is going to be a little more rounded. And you're almost going to see this as it's curving down. Um, the contacts are still going to be on the incisal third. So for the mandibular teeth, in terms of the incisors, just remember that all of them are going to be in the incisal third. Not a whole lot to worry about that. Again, this is going to have the three mammalons as well as the cingulum to give you four developmental lobes. Um, fairly easy to remember because it's all the same. Now in terms of the height of contour, it's going to be exactly the same as before, where they're both going to be in the cervical one-third. And, um, In terms of the contact, I did make one mistake. The distal side, it is in the incisal one third, but it's a little slightly cervical. So it's going to be a little bit lower, but not like in the junction of the incisal and middle third. It's going to be, as I drew it, slightly lower. And that's because of the way that this tooth kind of has that slope of the um, distal incisal angle. In terms of the root canals, um, and many many times you're going to see that there's often two root canals in the lateral uh, mandibular incisors, um, and this one is another one of those that you should know that the cingulum is going to be uh, it's going to be positioned distally, and if we go back to this twist. We know that since there is this distal lingual twist, we would expect the cingulum would be shifted a little bit to the distal. Um, now, if we were to compare the the lingual fossas, the lingual fossa is going to be a lot more deeper on the mandibular lateral incisor compared to the central incisor. Um, and then on the face of the, or on the labial surface, I've drawn out that the there are going to be two depressions that are present. And when you're looking at the tooth, you're going to see that it's kind of like this very light depression. So you're going to have to look carefully. Um, and that is basically it for the mandibular incisors. From here, we're going to go into the canines, um, 
in the next video. Um, be sure to, if you like the video, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, comments, write them below. And uh, if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe.